Welcome back to another video. Today we are working on a 2001 Tacoma with the four cylinder engine. I have already removed the radiator, the hoses, the fan shroud, the battery, and the fan. That's where it goes bolted onto the fan clutch. I also removed the air box being held down by three bolts. You can see it was damaged prior to working on it. But that's one of the bolts right there. Another right there and a third one is down there. All 12 millimeter bolts. Sorry I didn't record the process of the removal. But it's not that difficult. You got this. Okay, so next we're going to loosen up this 14 millimeter idler bolt. And loosen up the 14 millimeter bolt on the top to loosen up the power steering belt. Once it's loose, go ahead and remove your belt and set it aside. Next, we're going to remove the connector for the power steering pump. Set that aside as well. Now for this step, I am loosening up the power steering 14 millimeter bolt through the power steering pulley. But my mistake, I needed to remove the pulley first because the bolts did not clear through the hole. Remove the power steering pump pulley 17 millimeter nut. Once the pulley is removed, now you can remove the power steering pump 14 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and keep all those components together and put them aside. Go ahead and set your power steering pump off to the side where it's clear for the engine removal. So next I remove this 12 millimeter bolt that holds on the power steering hose. Set it back to its place so I don't forget where it goes. Then I remove the alternator connector by pushing down on the tab and working at it back and forth until it's released, never pulling on the wires. Then I remove the 10 millimeter nut for the alternator wire. Set that aside, and I always like to put my nuts and bolts back where I removed them from if possible for easier installation. Next I release this wire harness hold down clip with a pocket screwdriver, and go ahead and set that aside. Next to remove the fuel filter bolt, I bend this connector out of the way, I already loosened it up, it's a 17 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that, there will be some fuel that comes out of there, FYI. So here's a banjo bolt removed, it has two washer gaskets, one on the bolt, the other one's on the filter, but we are going to be replacing those. Next I go ahead and I move this fuel hose over to the side with the harness. Now we're going to be removing this fuel hose, I already took off the clamp as you can see, just work at it back and forth until you are able to remove it, just like that. Next you're going to grab your 14mm and 17mm, preferably line wrench and remove that connection. Now right here I'm going to go ahead and remove this brake booster hose, release the clamp and pull the hose off. Okay now I'm underneath, I'm going to remove the starter cable. First I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the connector for the starter, push that on the tab and release it. Now I take off this cap that's covering the nut. There it goes, the cap is removed. Set that aside somewhere safe. Go ahead and remove this 12 millimeter nut for the starter wire. There I have the wire removed. Go on to the next step. Okay, I'm gonna remove this engine ground. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that. And I always like to put the bolts back where I took them off from for easier installation. I got all those wires and cables removed. Go ahead and set them aside. So this is a manual transmission. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the slave cylinder. I start off by removing that bracket 12 millimeter bolt. There it goes removed. Next we're gonna remove the slave cylinder two 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, now I have the slave cylinder removed. We'll go ahead and set that aside. Where it's clear for the engine removal. And I can't stress enough, always put your bolts back where you removed them for easier installation. Okay, so now we're on the other side. We're gonna work on removing this catalytic converter. Three bolts up there and two bolts down here. You can see it's pretty rusted, so we're gonna go ahead and spray it down with some penetrating oil before we start to work on this. So be generous with the penetrating oil and let those bolts soak in it so it could be easier for removal. I also sprayed the top ones as you can see. And while it soaks, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this air fuel ratio sensor 
just the connector. You don't have to remove it from the cat. And we're back on top. We're gonna go ahead and take off this clamp and remove the vacuum hose to the intake manifold. Go ahead and set your vacuum hose over to the side where it's clear for engine removal. Now we're gonna be working on disconnecting these heater hoses. Go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter bolt holding it down to the firewall. Remove the clamp that goes to the heater valve. Be careful when removing that hose, that valve is very brittle. Okay, so there I have it removed. Go ahead and just move that to the side. I'm gonna remove the other hose from the firewall. Okay, I have those hoses removed. Go ahead and move them where it's clear for removal. And now we're gonna work on this throttle linkage cable. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off from that little hold down bracket. I'm gonna disconnect it also from the front. Okay, here we are in the front. Remove this to remove the cable. I'm gonna also remove those two 12 millimeter bolts, holding down the whole bracket assembly. So disconnect the cable from the throttle body, just like that. And then go ahead and remove those two 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, now we have the two 12 millimeter bolts removed. Go ahead and set that aside. It's hard to do it with just one hand. All right, there we go. Okay, so next we're gonna remove that ground cable that's on the firewall. The 10 millimeter bolt. Once you have it removed, go ahead and square it back onto the firewall so you don't forget where it goes. Set your wire aside. Now I see my exhaust bolt through the top. Let's go ahead and give it some penetration persuasion. Just to aid in the removal procedure. That should be good. So while that soaks, we're gonna go ahead and remove our AC compressor. It's one, two, three, four bolts, two on the top, two on the bottom. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and remove this connector. Push down on the tab to release it and pop it out. It's a small connector, so I use a pocket screwdriver to remove it. Once it's removed, move on to the next step, remove the AC belt. Let me go over to the front and show you how to do it. So to remove this AC belt, first thing you have to do is loosen up this 14 millimeter nut on the tensioner idler pulley. Let me go ahead and grab my tool. So here I'm loosening it up. You don't have to take it off, just loosen it up. And then through the bottom, there's another 14 millimeter bolt. It's a long bolt. It's the adjustment, so loosen that up until your AC belt is loose enough for removal. So that's loose enough. Go ahead and remove it. Set that aside. So now that you're here on the bottom, you can see the two AC compressor bolts. They're 12 millimeters. Go ahead and remove them. Okay, so now I have all my compressor bolts removed. Go ahead and swing the AC compressor over to the side where the airbox goes. No need to disconnect the lines or hoses. It sets perfectly in this area as you can see. Okay, so now I'm on the passenger side interior. Go ahead and remove the glove box. And remove these three bolts holding down this cover. And now you have access to your ECM connectors. So I already disconnected the four ECM connectors. The way you do it, you push down on the tab and then disconnect it. You also want to disconnect these two connectors that are on the glove box. The way to do it, you get a pocket screwdriver to push down on the tab on the bottom to release the connector. Never pull on just the wire. For this bottom one, the tab is on the bottom as well. While you push down on the tab, you swing this locking mechanism. Swing it all the way to the bottom to unlock it, and the connector should pop out on its own. Once you have all your connectors removed, go ahead and push it out through the firewall. So in order to remove the wire harness out of the interior, you want to loosen up these 10 millimeter nuts. It's three in total. And now I'm disconnecting the bracket that the harness clips onto. Once I do that, I have access to my last 10 millimeter nut. Let's go ahead and remove that.
That should be good. Set that aside. Now you can remove your wire harness out of the interior through the firewall. Carefully pull on it. Once you have pulled out all the connectors, go ahead and set your wire harness on top of the engine, just like that. Okay, now let me go ahead and put back those 10 millimeter nuts and remove that's holding the wire harness to the firewall. There we go. Let me also get this bracket put it into place as well. And that's how it goes. Okay, so now I'm looking at my exhaust bolts. They've been soaking in the penetrating oil for a while. Let's go underneath and remove them. I'm gonna go ahead and try loosening them by hand at first. Have success with this one. The other one, not so much. You can see it got rounded off. I'll work at it from the other side, see if I can remove it. Okay, I was able to remove both of the bolts and nuts. I did have a little trouble with that one right there. The nut did get rounded off, but we have extras. I just got it from the other side to loosen it up. Go ahead and remove that. It's not a big problem. We can take care of that. Okay, so I'm going to remove these. 17 millimeter bolt that's holding on the exhaust pipe to the transmission bell housing. No going bad at all. Go ahead and remove those. Okay, so now I'm looking at those exhaust nuts for the exhaust manifold pipe. Already removed one. 14 millimeter. Got my impact. Gun it out. Easy peasy. Do the next one. Okay, so that one's smoking. Okay, so I was able to remove it. It came out with the whole stud. That's better than it breaking. So we can work with this. If it's a broken stud, it's a little bit harder, but we can work with this. Now, with all those removed, I removed the catalytic converter with the pipe. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Okay, so now I'm in the interior of the vehicle. For those who say, why didn't you wash your hands? Well, it is a beater truck, so I will wash whatever I get dirty. But just remove the shifter knob by turning it counterclockwise till it comes off. Now on the side of the housing for the shifter, there are two screws on the left side, one right there, and then the other one, let me focus, I'll show you, right there. And on the other side, there are three screws, all Phillips. One, two, and the third one is back there. Go ahead and remove all those screws. Okay, so now I removed all the screws. Go ahead and remove that housing. Now we can see our inner boot. We want to remove the bracket holding it down, being held down by four Phillips screws. It is really dirty down here, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that tool. I'm not gonna keep it. There goes the four Phillips screws back here it is really dirty okay so now I got them all removed go ahead and remove that that bracket or spacer or whatever you want to call it now you can remove your boot once you get it unstuck from all the debris all right let's go ahead and remove it from off the shifter okay now I have the remove I could see what's underneath we're going to go ahead and remove the whole shifter assembly. You can see the 12 millimeter bolts holding it down to the transmission. Make sure it's in neutral. Let's go ahead and remove these bolts. Okay, so you can see I removed the bolts right there. There's also two back there, six in total. I had to get the last two through the bottom. But simple enough, once you got them all removed, Go ahead and pop out your shifter assembly, just like that. Now this is very important. You see there's a gasket down there. The washers come off the gasket, so chances are they can fall inside the transmission. Just make sure they're all accounted for, and we're gonna replace the gasket as well. 
So I went ahead and stuffed the transmission with some rags so no pesos or quarters fall in. Okay, so now I'm underneath the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this carrier shaft bearing, two 14 millimeter bolts, and a nuts on top to hold it. So once you remove that, you can pop the drive shaft off the transmission. And I just leave it hanging on that cable right there. Perfect support. So now I got the transmission jacked up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this transmission mount bracket, two 14 millimeters and four 12 millimeters. Once you have those removed, go ahead and set it aside. You can see here, try to put all my bolts together from the components that it comes off of. As you can see they're all right here, all bolts accounted for. And now's a good time to check your transmission mount. Make sure there's no major cracks or play. This one's still in fairly good condition. Um, we're gonna leave our transmission jacked up and then we're gonna continue on top. Okay, so now we're on top, we're gonna disconnect the washer fluid hose. The one that goes to the hood is the easiest one to remove because we're gonna be removing this hood. It's being held down by four 12 millimeter bolts, two on this side and two on that side. Okay, so now I have the hood removed. Next step is we wanna make sure our hooks, engine hooks are in place. One right there and I have a spare hook from the other engine that I have. I took it off of that one. I'm gonna go ahead and set it back here. You can see there's a hole, perfect space for it. If you don't have a hook, you could just bolt in your chain into that hole. Just um, pop in that 14 millimeter through the chain and it works just as well. Okay, so now I have that rear hook installed. Let's go ahead and get our hoist ready. Okay, here I have my cherry picker all hooked up. Chain's hooked up to the hooks. Raise it up a little bit so the chain is nice and tight. Next, let's loosen up our motor mounts. So excuse the noise, it's the air compressor building up air. We're gonna be removing our motor mounts from where it bolts up to the frame. Being held out by two bolts being supported by two nuts on each side. You're gonna need to hold the nut to loosen up the bolts or vice versa. Here goes one side, you can see the bolt and the nut right there. As well as the other side, you can see the, the bolts is right there with the nut right on top of it. This is probably the most tedious part, but it's not that hard, honestly. Okay, some disclaimers that I didn't show. I did remove the clutch from the water pump and I did remove the front portion of the crank pulley being held on by four 12 millimeter bolt for easier removal. Okay, so now that I've removed and loosened everything up, you can see it's being supported on this chain. Go ahead and remove this engine and transmission all together. So as you can see, the engine and the transmission are out of the vehicle. I did have to raise my hoist all the way up and I did have to lower the vehicle. Uh, you may need to remove your tires or deflate them depending on the Toyota Tacoma. Um, but yeah, there you have it. Some tips when uh, doing this is as you're removing the engine and the transmission, um, do it slowly. Always be aware of your surroundings. Um, some common things that get in the way are the heater valve, um, the AC condenser. So just be aware and if you feel any restrictions as you're lifting out the engine, go back and double check. Make sure you didn't miss any connections. I'm sure I showed everything on the video, the things that I missed I did note down, but I am human so if I did miss anything please comment down below let me know, and also if you have any questions comment below I'll do my best to answer them, as always please like, comment and subscribe, still a lot of work to be done, I gotta rebuild this engine, deuces!